Hi everyone, welcome back. In the last video, I believe I mentioned the term cell pose and I also talked about how if I find time, I'd like to make a video on it. Well, I made some time to actually uh, explore cell pose and how to install it on Google Colab and how to actually train your own model. And this video is all about that. And if you want to be informed of future such videos, please do not forget to hit the subscribe button down below. And while you're there, find the thanks button if you feel extra generous. Now, jumping back into today's agenda, I plan on introducing you or going through the paper, original paper for cell pose, just to talk about what it is and how it can help you with uh, uh, the segmentation, instant segmentation, I should say, and why they call it a generalized model. And after that, I'm gonna jump on to Colab and walk you through the code. Well, not every line of the code, will uh, install cell pose and uh, in fact I'm going to reproduce exactly what they have on cell pose github page except instead of showing you the canned data that they have I'm going to show you hey here is some data I downloaded from Kaggle and along with uh, the masks of course and here is how you can go ahead and train it. Okay, so with that information, let's go ahead and jump into our discussion today. First of all, what is cell pose? It's a generalist algorithm for cellular segmentation. They call it cellular segmentation, but it can work for other images also, which we'll see later on. But uh, obviously the initial paper when they published it, their focus was on cellular segmentation. Now, what does generalist actually mean? Well, generalist means it can very precisely segment a wide range of image types. It's not like only you have the fluorescence images uh, or certain type of cell images. You can actually dump a whole bunch of diverse looking images and this has the ability of generalizing it. And uh, okay, now let's move on. Well, how does it actually work? Now, here is again uh, directly an excerpt from uh, the original paper. Here is the link to the original paper, but you can clearly see exactly their process. They're not directly predicting the masks like you would in other approaches, like for example, mask or CNN, you're actually pre predicting the regions of interest and also the masks. But in this case, they're converting the masks into a different space. In fact, they generate an auxiliary representation for the masks. And how are they doing that? As you can see, uh, think of uh, having an energy or a heat source right in the middle of uh, an object in your mask, right? So that's a cell, and at the center of the cell, you have a heat source. Now let the heat radiate, right? So that's the energy function for each mask. Uh, as they're representing that as equilibrium distribution of a heat diffusion simulation. So it's basically you have a heat source and you're letting it diffuse and you kind of look at the distribution of this uh, 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 of this and this is basically creating this flow representation and alternate representation of your mask. <clears throat> And then you're looking at the horizontal and vertical gradients of your, of your uh, basically the heat representation right there. And the important thing here is if you have the heat representation or if you have the flow fields, then it is possible for you to calculate the original mask back because what's a, I mean, you don't need a heat flow, right? I mean, you need your predictions, you need your final mask. So this is reversible. In addition to these two, did they mention, did I copy that here? Um, yeah, in addition to these two spatial uh, gradient maps, like these heat flow maps, like horizontal and vertical, they're also predicting another one that basically tells whether the pixel is inside uh, the cell or outside the cell. So that's another one that they're predicting. So all these three are combined into what you see as a flow field. And once that is done, then uh, the network is actually trained on, on uh, these, these flow fields. Um, so once once this is obtained, now they are reversible. So the masks are actually predicted by just going back. And the network that they use for this training is uh, the one that we are all familiar with, which is basically the unit framework. They made some changes, but uh, eventually this is just a regular unit, right? So regular unit is extremely powerful it is a great approach for semantic segmentation type of tasks and in this case they are feeding instead of uh, a direct mask they are actually feeding these flow fields 
that's that's basically the summary of how Cellpose actually works. Now, what type of data set? The more diverse, the better it is. And you can download the data set that they have used in training their model. And as you can see from the images, they range from images like these uh, fluorescence images to these grayscale images. These are like a bunch of shells, not even like cells. But you can see, I think they also have like plant cells and a whole bunch of diverse looking images like pebbles right there. Uh, so that's the diverse looking data set that they have. And how does it compare with other approaches? I mentioned Mask or CNN. I'm still a good fan of, big fan of Mask or CNN, but I like certain approaches like Cellpos and Stardust because they actually work great for certain type of applications. Now, they have compared it. Again, I, I definitely recommend you reading the original paper. It's pretty easy to read, by the way. And you can see this is what we are looking at compared to cell post artist and mask or CNN when you look at IOU uh, threshold so you get like much better uh, much better uh, representation right there <clears throat> of uh, uh, your IO uh, this is basically showing you the average precision so you're getting higher average precision in this case I believe it's showing you the uh, what is it showing? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, still average precision IOU matching threshold. So you generalist model, specialized data. Gen specialist model, specialized data. So this is a specialist. When it says specialist model, specialized data, that basically means all images look the same and you have a similar a model that's trained on images that look uh, very similar. When it says generalist model, that means uh, diverse type of images. You know, how does it work on diverse type of images? So eventually, when you have generalized type of data, when you have a generalist model, you're getting the best uh, uh, precision using the cell pose. So, so there is a reason why I'm, I'm making this video because I think this is useful for certain type of applications, especially when it is uh, when you're looking for a generalist model. Okay, now finally, how do the results look like? Again, look at the diverse results. And the best way for this to work is lots of diverse images. Just train the model on lots of diverse images. You need not to annotate like thousands and thousands and thousands of uh, images, especially if you are using cell post 2.0. And cell post 2.0, this is a paper from about a year ago. And as you can see, it's a new package that includes an ensemble of diverse pre-trained models as well as human in the loop pipeline. Meaning you look at the results, you're like, ah, I don't like it. Let me correct a few of these and feed it back to the network to actually get a better representation, better trained model. And the good thing is they also provide a user interface. If you don't like to code, you can actually use a UI to do the part. And I'm not going to talk about the... Uh, GUI aspects of it. You can go to their GitHub page, download it and test it out. I'm just going to show you how you can get started on uh, Google Colab. So uh, Cellpos 2.2 is all about, okay, you have Cellpos 1.0, which is a whole bunch of diverse looking data. You train your unit model on the flow fields and uh, you have a new image automatic segmentation, you're like, ah, that segmentation is not good. Go ahead and correct it manually. Go ahead and add it to the training. And then eventually after certain certain iterations, you have a very nice trained model that actually works on uh, on your images. So that is a quick background of uh, cell pose. And let's go ahead and uh, jump into the code. And uh, by the way, I leave all the links to whatever I just showed you as part of the description and also as part of the code, which is a Google Colab notebook. So you should be able to uh, access whatever I just showed you as part of the presentation uh, in terms of the links that refer to cell posts. And here is, for example, the cell post 2.0 paper that actually talks a lot about what you can do and much more obviously than what I covered. And uh, the way I plan on doing is not using their images because I just don't want to copy their code and show you, hey, here you go. <laughs> you can do it. I just want to show it on a different data set. So you know that, okay, this is how I need to get my stuff ready, right? So basically, the you need image and uh, mask pairs, like any instance or semantic segmentation. And since this is instance segmentation, the masks need to be in the format of instance segmentation, which is not Cocoa format or any of those basically a uh, uh, a uh, let me open the images that I plan on using so you can see exactly what I'm talking about so here is an input uh, for example one of the training images and here is the training mask and as you can see each object has a unique pixel number associated here so let me open this so you can see uh, keep an eye on the bottom area right there so if I put my mouse right there this object is assigned a value of 18 
that object value of 19. This one has a value of three, that's value of four. And there is an object here that has a value of two, another object here value of one. You can't see it clearly because it has a pixel value of one, but you get the idea. Each object has a unique pixel uh, pixel value, which is basically nothing but your instant segmentation mask. It's easy to create. I uh, look at my uh, playlist on how to annotate your own images. So you can find some of these uh, over there. Now, in this specific exercise, I have, uh, uh, I do not have time to annotate a whole bunch of images. I downloaded something. I just went to Kaggle and I searched for some uh, instant segmentation data sets and I, I just found a data set that, uh, that's, that's very challenging, but that's okay. It gives us a good start and I downloaded this and that's exactly what uh, one of the images I just showed you. I copied all of that into my Google Drive right here. And if I go into actual train folder, these are all the original data set. Uh, let's, can I change the view here? Yeah. So these are all the images from the original data set as, as uh, you saw in the screenshot earlier. But if I go back, I created a data uh, directory called SEM images. And here I have train test and other images is some test images I would like to randomly segment later on once the model is trained, but I have train and test. And I got those two from the link I just showed you on Kaggle and the train images. Uh, I have images and maps, which is masks. And under images, you can see all the images and they look very diverse here, right? They're not the same, they're diverse. And this uh, is a good test for, for my training model. And I only trained my model for 500 epochs, which took about 40 minutes or so on Colab, but uh, but you can uh, I can tell that it's still converging. So give it like 1,000 to 1,500 epochs. Just see uh, how how this uh, quality of output segmentation is. But this is this is the information. With this information, let's jump into the code now. Okay. Now uh, first thing first, I don't have to tell you change the runtime type to GPU. Do not waste GPUs if you don't need it. Don't use it. But since because it's a shared resource, all of us need it. So I enabled it and here you go all the links and as of today the uh, version that I'm using is Python 3.8.16 and I already mounted my Google Drive because I need to access the, the training data. Once I have that and all of this code again bulk of it is I modified certain aspects but bulk of it is directly from their github page which is right here I should have showed you this so you can see how you can go ahead and download I think you can download the GUI version right here they probably have it somewhere let me move up right there so they, they have a GUI version go ahead and download it if you want but basically I pip installed it and uh, I looked at one of the notebooks and I adapted that for this tutorial that's it I'm gonna share this look at look for the link down under the description okay so with this information let's go ahead and run the first cell which is basically installing all the required uh, libraries including tiff file Oftentimes you find yourself working with uh, scientific images that are in TIFF file format. Maybe you have only two channels, one for nuclei, one for, uh, one for uh, uh, cytoplasm, and if a bunch of other like cell posts, for example. That's one of the things we are installing here. And uh, this may take a few seconds, so let me pause the video and continue as soon as this is done. Okay, so this is done and uh, uh, normally when you do pip installation, you restart the runtime, but, uh, but here it's basically uh, by adding this, it's gonna, it's gonna restart the runtime. As you can see, it says your session has crashed and then it kind of restarted the runtime, yeah? So you don't have to do that. Now let's run the next set of uh, code. And again, all this is looking at first, let's go ahead and run it. And you can see it's looking at your uh, notebook version. What is the network we are going to use? And again, there are a few networks that you can use. Look at the documentation. I'm gonna use the cell pose one. And uh, we are going to import all the required libraries as part of this stage. That's, that's in, in fact, other than that, I can't, I can't see, yeah. In addition to that, there is a function for PDF export. This is basically after the training is done, all the export is captured as part of a PDF document. So this is everything that you need to create that uh, summary. Again, I haven't written a single line in this in this block of code. So there is, uh, uh, in fact, I didn't even look at it because if I need to write my own way of doing PDF files, then I look at how to do that. But in this case, I'm 
it's just it's just a uh, another tool for me in achieving my task so i don't want to waste anyone's time in talking about it uh, neither uh, i'm an expert at talking about that but the key point here is that block is basically something that, like a prerequisite go ahead and run it and now let's go down and make sure that we have a gpu access which we should uh, this is this is google colab sometimes you may not have the access if they are all busy but i i expect to see uh, i expect to see this so tesla t4 that's good 15 gb of uh, ram that's sufficient for us more than sufficient now uh, this is the now we have to define the parameters right so first of all where is your training images coming from where are your masks coming from and uh, by the way we have the markdown uh, here i hope you know what that means it's basically as part of the code you're for every line let's go to the end you're actually adding this so instead of uh, meddling with the code or instead of typing stuff in the the code you can actually uh, quickly uh, define those as part of the UI that it generates as part of your notebook yeah so here the training source is my training images I dumped my training images under drive my drive collab notebooks data cell pose uh, let's say SCM images and the train images and then these are the images right so the images so all i did is copy the path to it and paste the path right there same with the training target and what is the name that i would like to give to my trained model so it can create a directory with this trained model and then save all the required stuff in there so the, the name i'm giving it is cell pose sem tutorial obviously that's what i'm trying to do here and the model path where do you want to save it i want to save this under sem images slash model so if i go down here if you see under SEM images, I have a directory called models and within models, it actually creates a directory with this name. Previously, I trained a model called cell pose SEM3. Why SEM3? My SEM1 was 50 epochs. I got crappy results. The next 100 epochs or 200 epochs and SEM3 was like 500 epochs. That's the, I should have named it better. But uh, anyway, that's what that was and this is the model name and number of epochs this is where i type 500 but for this exercise let's go ahead and type 50 i'm going to stop it in the middle anyway so it doesn't matter and channel to use for training you can use grayscale you can use blue only green only red i'm using grayscale all I, all images i have are grayscale images and uh, there is no secondary training channel there is uh, i'm going to use the default advanced parameters you can also modify those as part of the code on the left hand side if you want but uh, but I, it makes sense to create an interface so you can easily change them uh, on the right hand side okay so let's go ahead and run that so that should be relatively quick and it's grabbing a few random images and showing me hey there is my image there is the channel used for training and that is the training uh, target uh, and looks good to me now let's go ahead and say check this box for uh, use data segment augmentation or you can just come here and type true uh, you can uncheck <laughs> you can type true either way I want to use data augmentation so let's go ahead and check that and now let's come down to do we want to use pre-trained weights I check this box uh, for example I train this model for 200 epochs and I'm like ah oh, the results are not great let me add 200 more epochs then I would check this box and say hey I'm using my own model and go ahead and uh, give the path to that model or you can just say uh, use any of the pre-trained models uh, when you install this uh, the cell pose you can actually access the cytoplasm cytoplasm 2 and nuclei models maybe nuclei model is not a bad model to start with in this case but I, I, I start from scratch let's see where it goes yeah that's exactly what I did for my 500 epochs uh, so I'm not using a uh, pre-trained model so let's go ahead and run this block of code uh, and now coming down this is the training the network path and here it's, it's basically looking at uh, creating a local you know directory under a slash content with the model name so it can save it periodically while the model is being trained and all that stuff yeah so let's run this and this may take uh, a little while if you're running it the first time because it's actually copying all the training data into your local instance on colab so this will take uh, a few seconds as you can see it's not that slow but but it's still copying it to another drive so let's pause the video for again a few more minutes and then i'll continue with the next block 
Okay, so the copying is done. And as you can see on the left hand side, let me collapse my local, my Google Col uh, Drive, and you can see how it created a new directory locally in that local instance, right? The drive is my Colab drive. Everything else is the local instances. And as you can see, there is a directory called cellpose SCM tutorial. There is a test folder, there is a train folder. And I think uh, right while it's actually training, it creates another folder called model within the train folder folder where it saves uh, where it saves the train model so let's go ahead and start the training process and again there is not much here it's basically uh, doing the training process and all the information is dumped into a pdf export remember in the first block we have a pdf export of everything and that's exactly the function it's actually calling down here so let's go ahead and start the training process and have a quick look at what's going on and I'll stop this and I'll show you how uh, we can load a pre-trained model and then go ahead and uh, segment uh, future images or some random images from the test data set here. Um, so it is, uh, you see how not all flows are present, whatever the uh, data it's giving. So basically we don't have the flow map. So it's actually computing the flows for the labels. Remember, cell pose, it's actually predicting the flows. So it needs to calculate this flow based on this heat thermal diffusion. So that's exactly what it's doing for all the masks. And in each mask, it, it, it has to do that, calculate the flows for each object. So it's going to take some time, but again, it's, it's computation is pretty fast nowadays. So it is going to be, uh, it's going to be done uh, pretty soon. So either way, let me pause the video one more time. So I don't waste your time. Okay, so it's almost getting there, but while it's doing that, I wanted to highlight one other aspect here. As you can see how in the train folder, you have both image and mask. So it took your original image and corresponding mask, and it copied both of them into a single a train folder with the same name, except with an extension of underscore image and underscore masks. Okay, so one point to note over there. And now it's actually comp computing flows for the labels right there, I believe for test maybe. And now 136 train images with masks and uh, number of images per epoch. And it's looking through all the parameters that we defined, like batch size and uh, learning rates and so on. And hopefully it will start training anytime soon. Yep, there you go. You, it created a directory called models within the train folder. So now it started training. So epoch zero whatever the time and the time is cumulative. So it tells you after after epoch 10, it took that much time, uh, what the loss is and it saves it into this models directory. And at the end of the 50 epochs, it actually saves another copy of the model in our models folder that we defined, which is nothing but, let me close that, our drive, my drive, collab notebooks and data. This is a bit too deep there. SCM images and uh, models and uh, whatever. You see how it created another directory right there for tutorial. So it's going to take this model, the final one, and copy it into this tutorial. But if I open the one that I have already done, you see how there is a PDF file with all the training report. And there is a, the, this is the actual model that I uh, should be using. Okay, so with that, uh, I think we can actually go ahead and close or stop this execution because you can see how it's doing uh, epoch zero, epoch five, and so on. Basically, you'll be staring at the screen, but let's go down and see what we can do. Now it's time to evaluate the model, and there was a function, I believe, not here, uh, to evaluate this again i'm not worrying too much about every line of the code you can go through that in fact i did do that once and then i'm like okay nothing for me to change there but evaluate the model you can use the current trained model in which case it's going to look for okay what is the current trained model but i'm not going to use that i am going to use the model that we trained earlier which i believe i think it's this one scm images uh, uh SEM images under models let's let me confirm this one more cell pose SEM3 yeah that's the model I want and uh, if using cell pose or omnipose models please indicate where you want to save the results I'm not using the default cell pose or omnipose model I'm using my own model right I'm not using any of these models I'm using my own model so there is the path so that uh, with this information let's go ahead and run it it's going to evaluate the model using the test uh, data set uh, that we have 
provided and when I scroll all the way down that's a lot of code right so I'm glad someone else already did that so it says okay cell pose SEM3 model will be evaluated so it, it it loaded the model now comes actually choosing the folder that contains our quality control data set which is our test data set right so source QC folder uh, you know our test let me quickly confirm this yeah this is our test images uh, target QC which is our masks this should be obviously be the test masks right there and channel grayscale nuclear channel we don't have any and object diameter I'm gonna leave everything de default and run this and uh, hopefully it should run let's scroll all the way down it's actually prediction on each of these images and uh, I only have like three images in my evaluation directory uh, and uh, let's see how good the training uh, uh, training was done now on this image you see how the results are not great it's not it's not that great maybe this is exactly why I say hey train for another 500 uh, epochs or something to get better results but uh, anyway so this is what I got and if I go to another image you see the drop down so let's select another image on this image it actually did a pretty decent job with an intersection over union of 94.6 in fact if you have 500 images as part of your test you'll get a nice report of everything so uh, let's check one, the third image in our training data set in our test data set and this result is super amazing I'm absolutely happy about it 95.8 percent now you may say oh I can get much better results using mask or CNN or something else yeah of course you can the uh, if all your data set is uh, similar but if you're looking for a generalized model this seems to be a much better approach and of course you should train enough epochs okay my model was still converging if you train enough epochs then you will have the better generalized model using this approach compared to mask or CNN at least uh, if you follow the paper uh, I haven't uh, actually in fact that's a good exercise maybe I'll do a video on comparing uh, a generalized model on Stardust cell pose and this although it would be a repetition of what the, these guys already did when they published the paper but it's fun when you do things your own uh, and then and then um, learn by your own experience that's it so now uh, you can provide your future predictions now you say oh I have an image somewhere else and uh, I want to segment it you can go ahead and do this and you only see this part of it you can just go ahead and edit the code if you want you know show the code and go ahead and edit it I'm pretty sure you know that but uh, yeah if you want to segment future images I, I don't know I have no clue what image I have let's go ahead and run it to see how it looks on our uh, on the images it never saw before uh, or on on images uh, on a, a image I literally downloaded this off uh, a Google search so I'm not even sure what to expect out of this but you can see predicted cell pose it's basically uh, a matter of adjusting the threshold I believe so I think I should go back and uh, look at the flow threshold and mask threshold if I d bring it down does it give me better result so this is another one that we should see I only trained it for 500 epochs so why not adjusting the threshold right so because it's doing an amazing job with my flow uh, uh, flow uh, graphs right there that means it's predicting the flow very well it's probably just a matter of the threshold right there so just just play with the threshold values let's just bring it down and see what uh, how the output looks like so yeah when I decrease the flow threshold you see how it's actually picking only some of these I I don't know what to expect here so let's go ahead and uh, this is where reading the documentation definitely helps and not just doing an experimentation but you can see how it started to actually now fill these things in right so if I actually yeah I want to get much better flow threshold decrease the mask threshold and that should help us in getting better uh, better segmentation let's give this one more try yeah it's slowly filling in although these two are recognized as two different objects but I I would like to play with I would like to play with a combination of these two but either way that's that's actually not bad given that I did not train uh, my I mean I did not train on images that look like this again I want to reinforce this point if you have a whole lot of data set that uh, you know with masks that look of images that look like this try mask or CNN in fact if 
your images look like that, try Stardust. That does an amazing job. As long as all the images look kind of similar, but for a diverse data set where you want this model to work, then CellPose really works great as we just saw in this case. I downloaded this off internet and that actually seems to work pretty decent. And also the one of these data set, it's actually uh, doing a pretty decent job. Okay, I should end this video. It's already too long now. I hope now you know what CellPose is and what is it meant to do for what type of applications you would like to use it, any application, as long as you want to generalize your uh, trained model and you know how to use it on Google Colab and I'll share the code. Go ahead and look at, uh, uh, look at the link under the description. And again, do not forget to hit the subscribe button if you are not already a subscriber. Thank you and let's meet again in the next video.